Welcome, and thank you for coming. What you're going to witness today is the beginning of innovation in action, and we're here to celebrate innovation in action. And in fact, we're making health healthcare history in Canada today. I have a quote here. I like to bring quotes to meetings. French author R. Mallet said, good ideas have no age, they have only a future. And that's what we have here today. A good idea and the future coming together. A clinical pharmacy traditionally exists inside a large city-based hospital. Today, this groundbreaking development puts clinical pharmacy into rural, small town Canada. Feng's new clinic will provide clinical pharmacy services to the doctors, nurses, and pharmacists of Huron, Perth, and Bruce and Gray counties. Gateway is the venue and structure that assists local healthcare providers to do meaningful healthcare research in their own backyard. And it's the conduit that connects rural health and healthcare issues with world-class individuals from world-class universities and other institutions. We are the portal that brings researchers to Seaforth and Huron County. The issues they explore here and the data they gather here is delivered back to the world. We strive to make this community and this area the Canadian Research Lab for Rural Healthcare Issues. With Fang, her students, and the research team we are building, we are becoming world class. This summer, Fang has 11 university students associated with Gateway and HealthKick working in this community. We are delivering youth to rural. While the rest of rural Ontario is watching its young people go down the road forever, we're bringing the best back here. So I hope that while you're here and while you're over at Bridges having a bite to eat afterwards, that you will take the opportunity to meet a very fine group of students who have been a great assist to us already this summer getting ready for this event. Gateway and Health Kick are just two of Glenn Devereaux's great ideas. And with the support of the Municipality of Huron East, the Huron East Community Trust, County of Huron, Marcy McCall McBain, the local golf club and local community, Carl Mitchell and many others who pitched in along the way, we are building a great concept. So I will turn it over to Gwen now to bring greetings. She is the president of Gateway. Well, I have to say, Dan did an incredible job of uh, welcoming you and introducing our concept today. For those of you um, understanding Gateway is difficult, and then we then we decide to open a clinic on top of that. Uh, so, so it bec it becomes great confusion, and it's a delight for me to welcome all of you on behalf of the board of directors um, to this celebration today. You are witnessing the opening of the first rural clinical pharmacy outside a city-based teaching hospital. And we are very proud to be part of such an exciting organization as Gateway, um, bringing the rural community's research and teaching not possible in the counties of Huron, Perth, Gray and Bruce without the great investment made by the University of Waterloo School of Pharmacy. And Dr. Chang is our chair of rural pharmacy. She's been asked now. And she is joining right behind her five more chairs that will be announced that I'm very excited about announcing. So she is in a very elite group and, um, and she's a very, very bright star. Uh, I cannot tell you when Dan, um, I remember the Jake breaks at the opening, so I'm really glad we have a microphone because wait till Tim Hortons opens. Um, when Fang keeps sending these emails, please welcome so and so and so and so and so and so. So at yesterday's count, I thought we had seven students. Today I hear nine. Dan, were you up to 12? 11. 11. So 
I have lost track, but we have somewhere between 15 and 20 students employed for the summer between Gateway and Health Tech. So uh, I agree with Dan, we are bringing a lot of rural youth and with them the bright minds uh, bringing new innovation to our region. And we're delighted to reap the healthcare benefits right here, right now, and in our future. So as a community person, uh, I take great pride today in this accomplishment. So thank you all for coming, and I look forward to uh, seeing you all out at Bridges. So I, thanks, Ben. So Bill Strong, are you ready to go? Bill's here to bring greetings on behalf of Dan Law, the MP for Huron Bruce. Thanks very much, and uh, good evening. Afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure for uh, to be here this afternoon and represent Ben. Um, he would like to have been here, but unfortunately, other duties took him away. Um, I do bring greetings from Ben, the government of Canada, and uh, certainly the the uh, foresight that the executive and directors of this organization have demonstrated is what an asset to the community. Uh, as you mentioned earlier, the rest of Ontario is sort of watching what's happening here in, in Seaforth and here in County. And uh, that is, uh, all the credit goes to Gwen and your staff and all those on your committee. Uh, it's, it's great to be a part of this day because it's special to, not only to the people of the area, but of present people, but the future as well. And uh, once again, thanks for the invitation. Uh, on Ben's behalf, congratulations, and uh, have a good meeting. Thanks very much. Thompson, our MPP for Huron Bruce. We appreciate you being here in person. Thank you. You're very welcome. And it is indeed a pleasure to be here, and it is exciting. I have to tell you, I started off my day today in Owen Sound with Dr. Hazel Lynn, and it just seems fitting that I'm here this afternoon. And uh, I met with Dan and Gwen earlier this winter to be introduced to the whole concept of Gateway. And Dr. Chang, I got excited that day and I'm just as excited today because we want to thank you for recognizing that there's so much to offer in rural Ontario, specifically Huron County. And we give you a heartfelt welcome and a guarantee that we're going to be here to help you realize the potential that you're with your students and yourself and the University of Waterloo behind you and the great team at Gateway, there's so much potential to be realized. And uh, it just goes to prove that rural Ontario, here in Bruce matters. And so it's a pleasure to be here and it's great to see folks out from the local community. And uh, I look forward to seeing where this goes and to support you all the way along. Thank you so much. To ask Bernie McClellan now. Bernie is the mayor of Huron East and the warden of Huron County to say a few words. Um, thank you very much. Uh, actually, I guess this, uh, this goes back quite a ways for me. Um, I was not part of the original group that uh, went down to Hazard County to actually find out about uh, the, the whole project and, and what the concept was when it started. Uh, but I'll tell you, they came back uh, to the council here in East here, and, and they had quite a sales pitch and uh, quite a story of uh, what rural health research could actually do in, in a rural area and, and how it could grow a community. And uh, I know our council bought into it and we wanted to be part of this project. Uh, they also then uh, wanted to make a sales pitch to the county. Um, I helped make that sales pitch when we went up there. The county um, donated 500000 originally uh, to this project because uh, the county certainly recognized that rural health research was something that uh, we wanted to invest in. Uh, everybody is going to use it uh, at some point. And, and we could see that this was really the, uh, the future and it was certainly going to help uh, the county, the municipality, everybody uh, in the long run. And uh, I'll tell you, um, anybody that knows me knows that I always complain about the speed of politics. And, uh, and this is all, unfortunately just another example because Gateway has been around for quite a while or, or certainly trying to get established. And uh, I, uh, I got invited to a few meetings last year and I, uh, I went to one of the meetings and I said, uh, I had just uh, brokered a deal with the hospital trust that um, they were going to uh, basically uh, give 33 of their acres um, that they had out by the hospital back to the municipality, which the municipality uh, would have the right to allow Gateway to expand their operations, whether it be for uh, schools, teaching centers, whatever. 
And that came with a round of applause, and I felt like a hero. Um, it's taken a year just to negotiate where the access had to be for the property. So politics doesn't move near as fast as we want to. So we've spent a year just to get that first part of it done. And uh, I'm going to have to talk to Lisa after this because now it's back in the province's hand. Because now we've got to get the Minister of Health to agree that this is actually a good thing to move forward. Uh, so we need their approval um, to actually do this transfer. But I hope uh, with all these agencies and parties working together, um, that everybody's going to recognize that we've got a worthwhile project here and this is something that's going to be benefit everybody. Thank you very much. Now I'd invite Mary Stanley. Mary has the longest title of anyone speaking today. She is the Associate Director of Development and Alumni Affairs at the School of Pharmacy, University of Waterloo. Mary? Hopefully I won't have the longest talk. I'm delighted to be here today to represent the University of Waterloo and the School of Pharmacy. Um, our involvement with Gateway is truly a perfect fit. The university has always valued a close relationship with the community and our industry partners. In fact, our university 55 years ago was founded by a group of uh, businessmen in the KW area who needed to bring in some additional engineers and actuarials into the area. So they banded together and with that can-do spirit eventually created a university. That same spirit continued when the School of Pharmacy was created in 2008. The region needed to bring in more healthcare professionals into the area and the city of Kitchener was interested in revitalizing its downtown core. And so a group, a very diverse group of people got together and the School of Pharmacy was created. The city of Kitchener donated eight acres of land as well as $30 million to help create the program and build our building. And it's quite a lovely building if anybody is able, ever able to, to visit downtown Kitchener. It's um, floral panels that are very distinctive and that actually has been acknowledged as one of the most distinctive um, buildings built in Ontario in the last 10 years. So we're very proud of it. We're also very proud of our school and it goes well beyond our building. Our founding director, Jake Thiessen, established a full vision for the school. This is the first school of pharmacy that's been built in Canada in 20 years. He wanted our graduates to be great citizens with a broad view, great Canadians and great pharmacists. And as a new school, we had the opportunity to build a curriculum that was informed by current health care needs and issues and future health care needs and issues rather than past issues. Waterloo Pharmacy is the first co-op pharmacy program in Canada. Co-op is the cornerstone of the experiential education that our students receive. In fact, they, they spend a total of 16 months out in the community and they're, they're, they've been involved in this community, hospital pharmacy, family health care team, long-term care, pharmaceutical and the pharmaceutical industry. We are able to offer our students a diverse range of experiences that are unmatched in any other pharmacy program really throughout North America. Currently we um, pretty much are at capacity for the undergraduate school. We are close to 120 students per year. It's a four-year program, so we have about 480 students in the program. We have a growing graduate program with about 30 faculty and 20 staff. Many of our bright young students come to us from southwestern Ontario and a number from small communities. And that's very important. We also have very gifted young faculty, um, many who have created novel partnerships and are doing some very innovative research. Dr. Feng Chang is, is one of our shining stars. And her students, uh, along with other healthcare professionals um, in this area, have already been doing some very interesting research. And I know just chatting with her on some possible projects, she has a whole list of projects that she'd like to undertake. We just need to find some more bodies and more hours in the day, I think. Finally, I come back to my original point that the partnership with Gateway and the School of Pharmacy is really a perfect fit. We're very proud to be part of this and very excited about the future. This important partnership will truly help to improve the quality of life of rural residents. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you also for so much for being here, and uh, especially the the kind words that have uh, preceded me. Um, I feel like I don't quite know what to say now, but um, um, I will give you a bit of sort of the inspiration behind this. Um, so for those of you who don't know me, I'm in academia now, but I actually started out as a clinician. I have been a clinician for most of my um, career up until, thanks, <laughs> um, most of my career up until coming to the University of Waterloo, actually. So I've been a, a pharmacist in the hospitals, I've been a pharmacist in the community, and I've, I've been a specialist, I've been a consultant, etc. And uh, I'll just tell you one very quick story about um, the types of things that, uh, that brought, to, brought me to here today. Um, this is a true story of a lady I know. She's in her early 60s, or she was in her early 60s when this happened just a few years ago. And uh, she was completely healthy and uh, never had any medications, didn't have any conditions, or you know, was very active in the community, always went out and walked to the mall and did all sorts of things like that. Um, so she, um, in her early 60s, she retired and uh, she went to her family physician and the family physician said, well, guess what, your blood pressure is a little bit high, so let's try a medication. So within the span of about a couple of weeks, she had gone to see her physician five times. She went to eMERGE, she got a uh, cardiac um, consultant, specialist consultation appointment, and she had a follow-up appointment. And she has about uh, she had about uh, you know four or five bottles of medication sitting in her cupboard that weren't being used. So what happened was uh, the first time she went, she got to Norvasc, which is actually a very commonly used uh, blood pressure agent, and uh, she got uh, a condition called reflective reflexive tachycardia, which just means your heart speeds up. It's a it's a side effect from the medication, but you can imagine for someone who's always been healthy, that was that really scared her. And so she went to emerge, she went to, and of course they sent, they dutifully sent her to the cardiac specialist uh, for all the follow-ups and EKG, et cetera, et cetera. She went back, she got her medication changed to a beta blocker, which slows her heart down. And, uh, and then it uh, dropped below 50, she felt miserable, she went back again, they gave her a water pill, but by this time she was so anxious that uh, the doctor felt it wasn't enough. So she got put on a second medication um, and uh, she um, got put on an ACE inhibitor, which caused, uh, again, a common side effect, um, which is like a dry cough that, uh, that she was uncomfortable with. So that led to her fifth visit, and uh, she was finally put on a, um, an ARB, which is like a class of medication that you use uh, as an alternative to ACE inhibitors. So the point of the story is, um, she to date remains on both, and but she was quite exasperated by this whole experience with the medication use and the healthcare system, and uh, and you could easily see someone like her um, not wanting to take her medications as a result, and that leads to a whole other series of issues. I guess my point is just that um, from these stories like this, you realize how much medications impact our quality of life as well as the healthcare system in terms of burden and cost. And, um, and this is all in a patient who was previously very healthy and actually was completely adherent to whatever the doctor told her to do. So imagine if it's people who are on like eight or nine medications to start with and who have three or four medical conditions to begin with. And it's not an easy thing to navigate. And with the guidelines, the way um, that, that uh, current pr best practice guidelines are all promoting multimodal approaches, which is actually rightly so, but what that leads to is a very complex regimen. And what we're trying to do here is essentially bring a higher level of clinical services out to the community to detach pharmacists from the boundaries of the dispensary, to offer the community, the patients and the clinicians more choices, more options and more flexibility. So they can have some one-on-one -on -one appointment time, they can have more time and there's more um, options for them to choose from. Um, giving them more attention and, uh, and some one-on-one -on -one understanding of their own issues so that every therapeutic plan, every treatment plan becomes customized to the individual. And that's what we're hoping to accomplish with this. 
Um, we're holding, we're hosting a, an open house throughout the next week. So I hope you will share the word and ask people to pop by. If people want to talk to us, um, we operate on an appointment basis because we're, we're just not able to be here all the time right now. But uh, we certainly hope to expand as time goes on. So um, if you, you know, feel free to recommend uh, people to come by and talk to us. But looking around here today, I realized that none of this could have happened without the amazing support from the community, Gateway, School of Pharmacy, and certainly my uh, amazing team over there today. Uh, they've done all the work in putting this together along with help from uh, Gateway. The, um, this summer we actually have students from four universities. So we have students from the universities of Waterloo, Toronto, uh, McGill, and um, Western. And we have students from nutrition, kinesiology, pharmacy, you know, um, health systems, and we even have computer science and science with us. So it, uh, I think it speaks a lot to what uh, Gateway's uh, mandate is in terms of what we're trying to do. And people have a say I'm totally on dance words and throwing a coding here. You know, people, uh, people say that uh, a journey of a thousand miles starts with one step.